Welcome to CKLA Knowledge 10. Lesson 3. The Shot Heard Round the World. What have we learned? We now know that at this time, 13 colonies have been settled and established in what is now known as the United States of America. Today, we pay taxes on certain things that we buy, and those taxes are given to the government and used for things like roads, schools, police, and many other things. Well, back in the time of 1773, Great Britain, the king, King George III, had set a very high tax on one of the favorite drinks, tea, and the colonists were not happy. They tried to communicate this, but with no representation in Parliament across the Atlantic Ocean, no one was listening to them. So they decided to have a tea party, and not a normal tea party. The Sons of Liberty climbed aboard the ships that came into the port and dumped crates and crates of expensive tea into the harbor. After that, King George got very angry and the colonists decided to all meet in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania to decide what to do next. Everyone sent someone to represent their own colony. The first time the colonists were able to send someone to represent what they wanted. Everyone except Georgia, that is. Today, we are going to pick up our story and see what happens. We're going to find out what happened that led to the shot that was heard round the world. We're going to identify and describe the significant events leading up to the Revolutionary War. And we would like to be able to understand the word volunteers by the end of our read aloud story today. Before we get started, we have an important person to introduce in our story. His name is Paul Revere. I told you a little bit about him the last time we were together. Now, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow wrote a poem about Paul Revere that has become a legend today. Parts of our read aloud today are true, but other parts were made up by the author. We are going to learn more about Paul Revere in our story today. Paul Revere made a patriotic gesture and commonly used phrases from Longfellow's famous poem. Paul Revere was a real man and made a similar ride to the one that is told in our story. There are even statues of him today. He is a famous man and a part of how our country was formed. After the Boston Tea Party, King George sent thousands of British soldiers to Boston to make sure the colonists obeyed the king's order or to make sure that the colonists did as the king ordered them to do. They swarmed the streets of the city in their fancy red uniforms with shiny buttons, earning themselves the name Redcoats. They carried weapons with them everywhere they went. This made the people of Boston very angry. The city no longer felt like home to them. They did not know whom to trust, spies, or people who secretly kept watch on other people spread out all over the city. British soldiers 
disguised as colonists and colonists disguised as British soldiers. There was lots of whispering in the streets as people kept secrets from one another. It was not very pleasant and even a little scary. Paul Revere was a silversmith living in Boston. As a silversmith, he was kept quite busy making and repairing silver dinnerware, candlesticks, and jewelry. A sign with a silver pitcher hung outside his shop on the town square. One day, the door to his shop flew open and a friend rushed over to Revere's side. The two men were both members of the Sons of Liberty, the group of patriots who had emptied tea into the Boston Harbor. Ever since the Boston Tea Party, the colonists of Massachusetts had been hiding weapons, gunpowder, and cannonballs in neighboring towns. The British, afraid the colonists might be planning to attack them, captured the weapons whenever they learned where they were hidden. Now, as the two men huddled together in the back of Revere's shop, his friend whispered that the British were planning to raid the colonists' storehouse of weapons in the town of Concord. The British were there to travel that night, he said, but nobody knew whether they would march there by land or choose the shorter route and sail on a boat by sea. The Patriots knew they must somehow warn the militia in Concord that the British were coming by sea. Revere and the others spied on the British to discover their soldiers' plans. When Revere learned the troops were coming by sea, he arranged for a signal to be given, a secret code. His friend was to climb up the bell tower of the Old North Church, light one lantern and hang it in the belfry or bell tower if the British are traveling on foot by land, Revere told his friend. But if they are traveling on a boat by sea, hang two lanterns. Paul Revere left his family and crept down to the banks of the Charles River. He quietly crossed the river in a boat to a spot where he borrowed a horse from his friend and fellow patriot. Paul Revere mounted the horse, tipped his hat in thanks to the patriots, and sped away. As he galloped through towns along the way, Revere shouted to the colonists in their bed, the Redcoats are coming, the Redcoats are coming. All around him, shutters were thrown open as people began waking in the middle of the night. When Revere reached the town of Lexington with word of the approaching British troops, men hurried from their homes, joining one another with their muskets in the middle of the town. These men, known as Minute Men, because they were expected to be ready to fight at a minute's notice, slept with their muskets and gunpowder beside their beds. Revere was joined by a second rider, William Dawes, who had been sent on the same mission, but following a different path to Lexington. At dawn, the British reached Lexington. The Minutemen were farmers and shopkeepers, volunteers for the country, not trained soldiers. Volunteers chose to do a job without being paid. They looked ragged next to the well-dressed British soldiers or redcoats. In the confusion of the early morning hours, a shot was fired. Others fired back and fighting continued throughout the morning. Finally, Minutemen were able to force the British to return to Boston 
firing at them from behind rocks, trees, and fences all along the way. To this day, no one knows who fired the first shot that day. Nerves had been on edge since the Boston Tea Party, so it is not surprising that guns went off. That first shot was the beginning of a long war between the British and their American colonies. It is known as the shot heard round the world because not only did it change life in the colonies, but it also changed things round the world in Great Britain, all the way across the Atlantic Ocean. That long war became known as the Revolutionary War. Could it be that the shot heard round the world rang out so loudly from the Massachusetts colony that it actually reached King George's ears that April morning? What do you think? Next time, we will learn how the colonies declared independence from Great Britain. We will hear more about George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, and Thomas Jefferson.